So the last thing that I, we're running out of time, um, I have to bring this up because it is, this is a lot of people were very turned off by the Green Party uh, during COVID pandemic for saying that the Green Party supports mandates, vaccine mandates. And a lot of people felt, um, I, I personally was very turned off by that uh, feeling like, you know, for me personally, I felt like it was totally antithetical to personal medical freedom, personal medical choice the ability for people to make their own informed consent, uh, to, ha to threaten them with job loss if they don't take a, a vaccine that was not tested for very long. It turned out the vaccine did not work in the way that people thought it would work, that it would stop the spread of the virus, that it would prevent you from getting COVID-19. That did not happen. Um, so that is a big beef I have with the Green Party. Uh, a lot of people I know watching this program have that same exact beef. What is your response to that? Are you were you for vaccine mandates? I know that that even within the Green Party, it seemed to be controversial. Oh, it was extremely, and and that uh, statement was not legitimate. It did not go through the process. The steering committee does not have the power to make policy. They cannot make policy. So that statement really should be repealed, and. Uh, you know, it was not legitimate and it completely sidestepped a dialogue within the party because the party uh, has very mixed feelings about this. And I think a lot of people have mixed feelings about this. And I think the overarching feeling is that we can't, unfortunately, trust our regulators to do what's right for us because they are taking marching orders from big pharma, you know, fossil fuel industry, who knows, you know, they, they are a... Um, you know, they are a product of a very corrupt political system. And whether it's the revolving door so that like you have people moving from Monsanto into the FDA and, um, you know, or from the Sackler family and writing permissions for opioids, they wrote it themselves and created the opioid crisis or Boeing that basically prevented regulation of the Boeing Supermax, which kept mm -hmm. crashing then over and over. People do not trust our regulatory institutions. And this isn't just like a feeling in the air. You can look at polls over the years. We are at rock bottom right now. And whatever institution you look at, whether it is uh, Congress or the presidency or the Supreme Court or the corporate uh, mainstream media, it's at rock bottom. You know, they're uh, there's a statement in the uh, uh, the Declaration of Independence that all just power derives from consent of the governed. The governed do not consent. People do not respect or have confidence in our governmental institutions. That is a crisis. That's an all-out crisis. You know, I myself. As a medical doctor, I have never been comfortable with mandates. And back in the day, when I did my training, we didn't need mandates because people were not as, um, you know, kind of disdainful of regulatory institutions. And they didn't feel as ripped off by the healthcare system as they do today and health insurance. So people are really pissed off at the whole system. It's very hard. If you, you know, slap a mandate on people, like you were saying, They'll quit their job or they'll drop out of the military, you know, which is begging them to come back now. Um, mandates are not workable um, and they can be wrong. And in some ways they were wrong, um, you know, and we are dealing with a very moving target right now in terms of how to deal with COVID or the next epidemic. And I should add that the whole issue of where did COVID come from has not been addressed and must be addressed. And one of the first things I would do would be to set up a, um, a commission to get to the bottom of this because there are many unanswered questions about the origins of COVID. Uh, whichever theory you buy, there are unanswered questions and those questions can be answered. And the biggest question is, why has this not been addressed? Yet. Why are these questions still open? So there are many things. I, I feel like mandates are really the wrong approach. And mandates, I don't know what the status is in other countries, but they, they generally, other countries did not have to rely on mandates because people were not so thoroughly um, 
you know, disdainful of their regulatory institutions. So people would discuss things and they had better access to healthcare so they could have discussions with their healthcare providers and make good decisions. In our country, we don't have healthcare. People don't have access uh, broadly. And even when you have health insurance, you often can't afford to get it. You know, we did not provide a public health infrastructure to, uh, to deal with COVID. And then we didn't provide support for workers. So if workers need to stay home, then you've got to make it financially um, viable for workers to stay home. You can't just, you know, tell them that they have to shut down their business. You know, it, it doesn't right. work like that. You're being accountable to the community and to the people rather than to big pharma or whoever. You know, you don't make rules like that. So we need to fix kind of the basic drivers in the system. And I would hope to avoid mandates um, uh, because they're just, you know, they avoid, they they violate bodily autonomy, and they're also, I think, dangerous to, to democracy. It is Orwellian to mandate um, medical treatments for people. So I think uh, under all possible circumstances, they should be avoided, you know, yeah. unless there's, you know, some kind of like Ebola outbreak or something, you know. Uh, but under most circumstances, they are not helpful and they're problematic. I liked the way Iceland dealt with it when I was reading through their government website, um, which had, you know, I had to translate it, but they would say, you know, we're no, nobody's mandated to get this. Nobody has to get this. We do require frontline healthcare workers to have it. But if you don't want to get it, that's okay. We'll move you into a different position so that you're not just directly caring for patients at this time. Mm -hmm. They said, we don't know a lot mm -hmm. about these vaccines. We think they're safe. I mean, they were so honest. They were just like, we think they're safe. We don't know it, but it, but we're getting new information all the time. When we get the new information, we'll let you know. If you don't feel comfortable taking it, that's okay. Uh, but we we encourage it. We think that they're good. We think that they're safe. But there's a lot of things we don't know, and you can make up your own mind. I mean, I just felt like, wow, a, a government that treats its people like adults. You know, like you can make up your own mind, and we're things are fast moving. And then eventually, they said we're no longer. We're no longer um, going to administer this for younger people, you know, under 35 years old. They, they cut it off and said, not necessary. We've learned more information now. Wow. Oh, wow. Uh, and, you know, they just kind of it's like, why can't we have a medical, you know, a government like that that actually trusts us to be adults, that actually talks to us like adults? Uh, yes. That would be nice. Right. And, and that's when things start to work, you know, and, and that's why I think what's said in the Declaration of Independence is really important, you know, that power, just power derives from the consent of the governed. And you need to have dialogue and you need to have a process of mutual respect so that you can then, you know, consent and, you know, have some glue across society so that we can move forward and we can come to a consensus about how yeah. we deal with this stuff. Well, Jill Stein, um, you know, you may have, you may earn my vote again <laughs> this right. time. Uh, I really I I really like everything that you've said. Um, I don't have to agree with the camp. For me personally, I know a lot of people, well, well, a lot of people don't feel this way. They're kind of, you know, they feel like it's 100 percent or nothing. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like if I want to agree 100 percent with a candidate, then I need to run for office since I'm not running for office, I'll settle for 85, 90% of agreement. 85% agreement is good enough for me um, on the on the issues that are important. I think that you, whether we agree on certain things or not, like some of the minutia, the big issues, you know, I, I like what you stand for on the big issues. I know a lot of the viewers of this show like that, the getting money out of politics, ending these wars, bring really an America first agenda, coming back home to America, focusing on us, focusing on the people, um, and really focus, really focusing on people, you know, focusing on, uh, on and peace, you know, as your campaign slogan, people, planet peace. Uh, I think that is, those are really great, great things. And I think you've said a lot of really great things. So, um, thank you so much for being here. Best of luck on this campaign, best of luck getting, ballot access. So what people that maybe watch, they want to help you get that ballot access in their particular state, what can we do? Yeah, just go to uh, jillstein2024.com and sign up. And, okay. you know, if you sign up to volunteer, it'll ask you, you know, what you're interested in and so on. And then you'll hear from us. And there's 
a lot of action and a lot of really exciting stuff going on. So okay. please, please join us. Well, I've got that link down below. So it's Jill Stein 2024. You could donate to the campaign to try to get uh, Jill's name or or whoever the Green Party candidate, I suppose, ends up being. It most likely will be you. But um, uh, once we go through that full nomination process, but getting ballot access in all the states, getting getting things going and, of course, donating to your campaign to get you as the candidate and uh, hopefully into the White House. So, Jill, thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate your time. My honor. Look forward to the next one. Thanks so much, Kim.